On this Debaco University video, I'm going to break down a scientific article that looks at plant structure effects on chemical uniformity in cannabis plants. All right, let's take a look and see how plant structure affects chemical uniformity in cannabis. So first off, this is the research article um, here. If you want to look at it in more detail, I'd recommend you do because they do get into some great um, specifics of their pruning methods. So you might want to read this article uh, to once you find the pruning method, you think you want to investigate further, you might want to go back here to this original source. So first off, plant morphology and bud location. So plant shoot growth pattern and shape is commonly manipulated by growers worldwide by numerous techniques, including planting densities, trestling, plant hormones, and by the physical removal of plant organs. And that's according to the researchers there. In addition to the physical location of the inflorescence on the plants in relation to the light source, it was also investigated in this study, as we'll see. Both these factors contribute to the quality of the total harvest. So we want to keep in mind that not only the structure of the plant, but in relation to those buds into the um, intensity of the light can also impact their overall quality. So here's the description of some of their pruning methods and they go through them and they're kind of, they're pretty, they're quite extensive uh, here, which is great. They have a control, which is great, and a defoliation. This BBLR um, is bottom branches and leaves removed, commonly referred to as lollipopping. So where you see what they said BBLR, you can think of that as lollipopping. Then they went through and they have first primary branch removal, secondary branch removal, single prune, and double prune. I kind of highlight the double prune here and that's prune the plants twice at the duration of the single prune and a second time at the transition to the short day or flowering treatments. And this just as a reminder uh, in this trial they stated that this experiment was conducted in a randomized uh, random experimental design with six replicates. Replicated groups for each treatment was arranged in three rows out of which a plant from the center row was then sampled here. So this gives you an idea of their general structure based on the different um, plant architecture manipulation treatments that they mentioned here. So let's kind of look at the data now. So we kind of learned all the backgrounds there. Well, now let's get into the actual uh, data component of the architecture related to the cannabinoid yield. The results revealed that pruning the plants twice during cultivation was the optimum practice for increasing yield and other treatments decreased or did not affect yield quality. So I know there's a lot of numbers here, but we're looking at the different architecture manipulation treatments on the left, the CBGA in grams per plant, CB. DA, CBDVA, THCA, THEVA, and CBCA, all in grams per plant. I know there's a lot of numbers here, but what we're noticing is I highlighted it here with a little kind of green outline box here, is that the double prune method for all of the treatments here had the highest rate of return in grams per plant of the various cannabinoids uh, provided here. And there is some variability. We are talking about plants. We are talking about kind of a living organism here. Uh, some had very close similarities to A, um, A being the highest number and then subsequent letters indicating significant differences from a statistical tan standpoint using a two keys HD test uh, being different from, from the um, comparison there. So again, the kind of take home message here, we can definitely see uh, the double prune method improved all of these particular cannabinoids there. So that's where you can go back to the original article, look some more of the description of the details of that particular pruning method. Now, they also mentioned or looked at inflorescence uh, sampling locations. So inflorescence or bud sampling locations, one through five, kind of shown here on the plant. Uh, and this is an image of a control plant, which basically didn't have pruning, just to give you an idea of where that sampling may have occurred. Trimmed inflorescence was dried at 24 degrees Celsius and 55% air humidity for 14 days in an environmentally controlled chamber in the dark. So it gives you an idea of their kind of drying and curing process. Now, light penetration. Uh, so therefore, the architecture of manipulated uh, plants can be utilized to increase yield biomass and st standardization, but the cannabinoid yield should be addressed by other means. A considerable reduction of light inception down the shoot was observed, and the extent of spatial st standardization of the cannabinoid profile correlated with the effect of plant architecture on light penetration to the lower parts of the canopy. So what does that mean? Let's give a summary of that. Basically, uh, as we see here, just an under plant shot, not from the study, but just a random plant with lights above it, the penetration of that light diminishes quite 
quite substantially. So as you get deeper into that canopy, the light penetration becomes less and less and less. And this suggests that low light availability at the bottom of the plant or in deeply shaded regions of the plant is a powerful inducer for reduction of those chemical standardizations. Meaning those buds that are in the shade that are further away from the lights are simply going to yield less cannabinoids. So having good plant structure, but also exposing those buds in some way to the greatest amount of intensity of light coming down in this case uh, was advantageous to increase those uh, cannabinoid profiles there and standardizations. So the light in buds, so how does this kind of right relate to? Many growers in support of the screen of green method highlight the idea that maximizing light exposure will improve bud quality, which this study kind of confirms there. And this is support of this screen of green method where all those buds are kind of grown on the same uh, platform there, the same plane, all pointing up, all getting the maximum amount of light. However, though, Keep in mind that the added labor and time to properly perform this screen of green method. So when an operation is looking to maximize plant growth and efficiency, uh, the screen of green may not be the most advantageous of pruning methods. But for those that may be uh, with plant restriction numbers, can only grow so many plants and really is not the grower doesn't have the main focus on efficiency and quick turnover times. This is why the screen of green method is probably so popular with many growers, because it is a way to kind of produce more of those top quality A buds from a single plant. So lastly, optimizing that plant structure. So the double prune method, um, as stated in this article, uh, is that allows for maximum light exposure to as many buds as possible, was proven to be advantageous. And this gives the idea that slightly smaller but well-structured plants uh, can be top quality producers. So you don't necessarily need some giant plant to have high quality, high yielding uh, production. Smaller, more manicured, better trimmed, better pruned, uh, better allocation of light to buds ratios uh, can be advantageous. Now we don't wanna necessarily go too small and make it you know, a little bonsai plant, uh, but look at this study. I think it presents some good information that some growers may have known, but kind of gives you some scientific background and may Maybe you find a new pruning method that can help increase your yields uh, without really having to change that much since I do still understand your strain or cultivar. Just this pruning method or that architecture change, could, you could see an improvement in your yields. Best of luck.